What's up guys, welcome back. Today, we are loading up and getting ready to head up to Tennessee. We're gonna be stopping at semi-casual shop and doing some more work to uh, the Tratter Taxi here. We're taking my TRX with us. We're gonna do a little family vacationing too and we're taking the trailer because we're gonna be um, picking up a tractor on the way back. And I got a very special little car I picked up too. It's gonna be sick. Um, a lot of you guys have been wondering why we have a step deck. Well, because our new trailer is in the trailer shop in Tampa. I'm trying to figure out why the brakes keep having issues. I backed them off and readjusted them and they just keep locking down to where we have flat spots in the tires now. And this trailer seems to work perfect behind my truck still. So definitely some issues going on with that trailer. They are working on getting it fixed up. Thankfully, Vic is letting me use this trailer for the time being. So uh, but back to the main part of the video. I've got a fuel tank installed back here. So we can save on fuel, guys. We're gonna get the truck backed up and fill her up. Also gonna drop a little plug for a green APU over there. That thing has been kicking for about an hour. It is like 93, 94 degrees here in Florida. And um, my wife, Amber, started putting stuff in the truck, some food, and we didn't want it to get too hot. So went ahead and kicked it on. We got the inside temp in here, freaking cooling down, son, cooling down. So this thing started up, pulled over there next to the fuel tank. I was just thinking to myself, before I pull over there and fill it full of fuel, I should go ahead and load the TRX up. Um, well, I'm backed up to the dock, I reckon. That'd be kind of stupid not to, so. Load this baby up. Man, I've been in love with this truck. I'm still trying to get rid of the Ram bar and the front and rear bumpers. If anybody has a Ram TRX and you want these aftermarket bumpers with the worn winch in the front and all the light bars and all that stuff, hit me up. I'm willing to trade for stocks. Plus a little bit of cash on your end, of course. This thing is one sick unit. <clears throat> it is terribly hot in here. <sighs> Good lord, it's so hot. What is the uh, outside temp? It says 85 degrees. That is a freaking lie. That's a lie. So anyway, guys, I had a 500-gallon fuel tank delivered, and we get it filled up full of on-road fuel. Um, you would think we would be getting it full of off-road because of all the equipment we have here, but we've been burning a massive amount of fuel in the semi and it's, as you guys know it holds 250 gallons of fuel so i can make it up to tennessee and back on a full truck of full of fuel which isn't bad but along the way you stop at all these truck stops you end up buying more to drink more snacks all this and fuel at truck stops is gosh like right here local we're paying here in florida paying like 565 a gallon of fuel i can get this fuel right here delivered for 540, 545 a gallon. So we're saving 20 cents a gallon there. Plus when it comes to our, if the fuel taxes we're having to pay, it's a lot less. We're not having to keep up with all these different states because of right here, we're pumping it right here in Florida, 95% of the time. So it works out great. We're saving it, I would say a ton of money, but definitely, you know, we're running all the time, five to $600 a month right there. And that is pretty easy. And it's nice just to pull up right here and fill up before heading out on a long trip. So let's kick this pump on and fill this baby up. Just a simple switch, 500 gallons, gonna fill her up. Brand new. Well, that was a little bit of red diesel in there for a second. <laughs> All right. And this is good, clean fuel. It's not none of that biodiesel like Pilot Flying J uses. That crap's just nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, I'm so pumped to do some more chrome to this thing up here at Brian's. Look at that TRX. That thing just looks sexy on there. The only thing, the only thing that's not fun about this, it only pumps 20 gallons a minute. So our new hired help, Ryan, I'm sure his fingers are getting tired. Fingers getting tired yet? Oh yeah. Hey, we're getting there. Sweet. So on our trip up semi-casual, we're going to be putting some um, Iowa Customs hub covers and some lug nut covers on it. Uh, we are going to be doing fenders and stuff in about a month. Uh, what else are we doing? We're going to do the airdrop switch so we can drop the front airbags in the front. We're doing full six inch sleeper panels on it. We've got some breather lights going on in the front of this baby. She's going to look freaking sick. I'm freaking pumped. So pumped. Can't even, I'm so excited. And we'll be at the Large Cars and Guitars truck show. Our good friends over at Truck Trailer Pro sent us a surprise package with some straps. See, I love the chains on the end zone because you can, if you got any sharp edges, these are usually catch the sharp edges before the strap does. And uh, we're going to use these to chain down our TRX on the truck. So we've got four of these total. We'll get these babies towed it out there and go strap the truck down. So it never fails trying to get out of town and go get something done, getting everything rounded up here at the shop so my guys can do what they need to do while I'm out of town. 
And it's awfully dark in here, guys. So I was over here checking breakers. We already put the panel back on and um, we've only got one leg of power coming in. So we've got a 110 on this wire and 110 right here. Yeah, you guys will say something about touching too close to it, I get it, but we've only got one volt on this side. I'm actually pretty far away. And um, 110 over here, so we're a little low on power. So we call the power company, see if they can come out here and get us fixed up because we've only got one leg of power in our fuse panel here and it's not happy. All right, just like that, we are all strapped down. We've got our Truck Trailer Pro straps on this freaking unit. She ain't going nowhere. And it's time to hit the road. Off to Tennessee, we roll. We're gonna be staying in the truck tonight. And uh, yeah, we're full, full of fuel. We've got my little scooter. We're gonna be using this thing. Oh my goodness. That's one thing I gotta say is that air dryer, when it drops the freaking load out of there, it shoots crap everywhere. It scares the piss out of me every time. Uh, let's hit the road. So made it just north of I-10 on I-75. Uh, we're gonna try to get north of Atlanta tonight. I'm pretty well rested. It took me a good a little bit of nap a couple days ago, so it's gonna roll over a few days to uh, be well rested. Let's check the chains on the trailer here. They should be all good. So I know this whole video is like, oh, we're gonna save a bunch of money, the pump, stuff like that. We're not getting fuel. Um, Amber's hungry and the baby's hungry. So we're gonna get some RBs and just happens to be my dad's headed to the hunting camp and he was like 10 miles ahead of us so we're gonna grab some dinner and pops and we had to stop and get some death so I may look into a solution on getting death at the shop because the Dodge 5500 that we've got for the shop truck uses death and so does the beat so let's uh walk inside and I'll prepay and get some death putting this thing and uh man I love these fake stacks they're just the best thing. It's in sliced bread. All right, so we're pumping the diesel exhaust cat piss fluid. The one thing that pisses me off more than anything is how hard it is to pull this hose out of this thing. Like, why in the heck is it so hard to pull that hose out? It makes zero sense. You gotta step on it and hold it down while you're pumping. Just put... Ugh, this stuff's so frustrating. I swear, guys, I would delete this truck and remove all this crap out from underneath it. If I didn't make a ton of YouTube videos, then we weren't so much in the public eye because, as you know, we're not supposed to take, not supposed to take this stuff off, but we just got to deal with it for now. Off goes Pop Pop. We just had, had dinner with Pop Pop, huh? Somebody just shipped their pants and Mom had to go grab the diaper bag, huh? You ship your pants. You ship your pants. Stinky butt. Hey, we're wide awake this morning, aren't we? <laughs> what are you doing, my guy? Mama just walked inside to go grab what? Go grab some food and uh, we're about to hit the road. Back out here on the open highway this morning, Amber had to use the restroom, you know, pregnant lady stuff. And, uh, me and this little guy are sitting here waiting on mama. Huh. Aren't we? He needs a haircut bad. What better place to park than a place that says no parking anytime? <laughs> I wish they'd say something. Like, hey, I got a pregnant wife that had to go to the potty. It's all right. So we're about, uh, I don't know, it says we'll be there at five o'clock, 36 miles out from this little tractor dealership we buy tractors from. We're gonna go up there and pay them for a couple and then head over to my buddy Kyle's house and go and load the T-Rex. And uh, yeah, let's go. All right, so we made it over here to American Outdoor Equipment. Really nice dealership here. Beautiful place. They got lots of stuff. Lots of, oh my God, the wind, wind noise. Lots of new Branson tractors. And we snatched up a Yanmar 33 horsepower tractor. I'm just gonna, I'll show you right quick. Gunner, we gonna show them. So we snatched up this Yanmar EX3200. These things are extremely similar to the older John Deere tractors with the Yanmar engines in them. I think those older John Deere's are actually built by Yanmar. Uh, we got that little unit right there. Uh, we've got this little Massey 1428V with this brand new finish mower behind it. We're gonna be taking home, maybe not this trip, but on one soon. And this little Kubota B3350. What are you doing? There's Mama Bear. All 
right, so our B3350 Kubota is parked back here out of the way. And I've also got this little Mahindra here that we bought. It's been about a month ago. I'm finally going to get up here and pick it up in about a week or so. Um, a tree fell on it, and they took it on trade. So we're going to take this home and uh, fix it up. Heck, maybe I'll make a YouTube video on uh, us fixing her up and get it all unbroken. Got a little Massey right around back there, too. Let's show that thing. It's a uh, Massey 231 or something like that. I'm not sure what model it is. We got like five tractors to pick up from these guys. Carry back home, get them sold. You guys are probably wondering why they don't retail uh, used equipment. Um, some dealerships just choose not to sell used tractors because there's a little bit of hassle that comes with selling used equipment with no warranty on it, which we deal with. But some people don't want to deal with it and that's perfectly understandable. So Massey 243, an absolute freaking cream puff with like 500 hours on it. Nice little unit. So we're headed to go park the truck down here at Jamie's property. Look at that sweet Lincoln. I didn't know he got that thing. All right, let's pull down the hill here and we'll uh, go dump the trailer off and unload the TRX and go to dinner. <sighs> so uh, Austin taught me how to tie straps like this. Yep, it's this thing unloaded. Dang, them are tight. Oh my God, they're tight. All right, it's time for Amber's new car. She hasn't got to see it yet. You, you gotta look at that, how pretty it is on the inside. It looks, I'm not... On the driver's side, come over here and check it out. <laughs> it's got the flip up headlights. Look how long it is. So she's a 1978 Lincoln Town Coupe. I don't know all the details on it. But uh, <laughs> it even comes with an antique auto license plate. Permanent. Shoot, we ain't even gotta register this thing. Uh, it does need a little bit of paint work. Maybe the new, new top be covered and maybe buff it out. I'm not sure. But she's got a 460 in it, big block. And it's got everything. Even the AC compressor kicks on. It doesn't blow cold, but it does kick on. Uh, it does have a few little issues. Um, this window doesn't roll up and some other things. But look at these couch potato seats in here. I mean, it's got everything, guys. This thing is even a sunroof and it doesn't leak. That's pretty pretty significant if I'm going to say right there because usually these things leak really bad um but very very cool I've always wanted one of these old cars my papa used to drive around old cars like this I thought it was the coolest thing and he's long gone now but this thing is a boat it doesn't even fit in the whole frame <laughs> all original it's even got the Lincoln uh little thing here I used to mess with those things when I was a little kid the flip up headlights pretty cool stuff there uh, white walls. The tires are even in decent shape. I picked this unit up. Look at the doors. Those doors are freaking huge. Two door. It only has 10,000 original miles on it too. Pretty freaking crazy. I'm pretty positive. I don't think it's rolled over because if it had 110,000, the seats would probably be in pretty rough shape. And it's not. Look at that. What should we do with it? So all in all, I paid two grand for it. We gotta haul it back home on the semi. So figure about 2,500, 2,750 bike fuel and things like that, getting it back home. Shout out my buddy Jamie for going and picking it up. And uh, the brakes are kind of a little iffy on it. We'll be lucky to get it loaded up, had an ant on me. Um, and headlights, headlights are a little wonky, he says. So yeah, I'm super pumped about this thing. I know it's way off topic. It's not a semi or a truck or anything like that, but who doesn't appreciate an old freaking sled? of a Lincoln Continental, guys. Make sure you smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace.